Good morning. Welcome to Holy Trinity Episcopal Church's service for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. This is Holy Eucharist, right too. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is taken from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. Ask the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants. All who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read together this morning Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, May God our own God, God, give us his blessing. May God, May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in all of him. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you once were disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, 
So they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in, this, in disobedience so that he be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Lord, Lord, then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone, they are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is really good to be back at Holy Trinity and preaching. It certainly feels like coming home, having been here for a number of years before, and I'm really glad to be here with you this morning. Today in our gospel message is one of my favorite stories this wonderful story of the woman who refuses to give up on receiving healing for her child. She knows that Jesus is the answer. She also knows that they must not be excluded. She is persistent, and rightly so. Jesus also is quite aware that she must not give up and knows that he must not exclude them and uses her persistence to demonstrate to his followers that the Father's salvation is for all who seek it, for all. No exclusions for those who truly believe and are truly and faithfully seek God's salvation. Even though his followers would send her away, they learn a wonderful lesson this day that God's salvation is for all of his creation. Christianity cannot be contained or confined or isolated. Christianity extends to all of God's creation. 
eternal fulfillment under the rule of God is open to all. There are no exceptions. God does not play favorites. God's creative intention for each human being who comes into this world is eternal fulfillment in his kingdom of love. There are no exceptions. Persistence is key. We as Episcopalians believe in the great commandment. In fact, we recite it in Rite 1 every time we use that. It is essential to our faith. We are to love God and we are to love one another. And Jesus added and made it even more difficult. We are to love one another as he did. There are no exceptions given. The great commandment does not say to love only those who look like me or pray like me, or speak like me, or believe like me, and on and on. There just are no exceptions, yet it is so very difficult for us at times. We find it easier to seek out reasons to highlight or focus upon our differences rather than celebrate our human commonalities. Persistence is instilled in us at very early ages in our lives. As I was working on this, I recalled a couple of early stories, really simplistic stories, but ones that you will recall. The story of the little engine that could. Even though the odds were against that engine achieving what it seemed to be impossible, it never gave up. It just kept going and finally did what it was supposed to do. And then that classic story of the tortoise and the hare. The tortoise was indeed persistent, winning in the end, despite, despite the foolishness and the overconfidence, and one might even say, the prejudice of the hare. These classic children's stories laid the groundwork for us as we learned to be persistent in some of the things that we set out to do. As followers of Christ, Christ is commanding us to follow his directions in achieving salvation. The great commandment is our guide in this quest. Our faith, our persistence, though we often stumble, aids us in achieving the ultimate salvation, which is the ultimate goal, which is salvation. I want to reflect a little bit back about persistence in my life. Um, my sister, my older sister, married an Episcopal priest when I was still in high school. Many years later, Don was continually urging me to consider going to seminary. In 1974, think about how long ago that was, I came down here to visit my folks, and we were out driving around, we saw the Episcopal sign at the end of Spring Lake Road, and we drove in here Nothing was open, it was locked, but we looked in the windows in 1974. And then finally, with persistence from my brother-in-law and others, in 1985, I went to seminary at Suwannee. Persistence. The followers of Jesus who heard this story many years ago, it changed their lives. It was another lesson for them to carry the message forward for all of us. One of my favorite authors is a history professor at Vanderbilt University. Turns out he's also an Episcopalian, by the way. His name is John Meacham, and he's written a number of books. He's won a Pulitzer Prize, I believe. And one of his books called The Soul of America, with this absolutely wonderful subtitle, which is The Battle for our better angels. He quotes George W. Bush. He says, three days after the terrorist attacks on Tuesday, September 11, 2001, with thousands dead and many missing never to be found, Bush climbed the steps of the lectern at Washington's National Cathedral to speak of America's resolve. But he was pastoral too acknowledging the loss of the hour and summoning the forces of love. Our purpose as a nation is firm, Bush said, yet our wounds as a people are recent 
and unhealed and lead us to pray. In many of, of our prayers this week, there was a searching and an honesty. And he recalled a story about a woman at St. Patrick's Church Cathedral in New York who prayed, I prayed to God to give us a sign that he is still here. And Bush went on to say, there are prayers that help us last through the day or endure the night. There are prayers of friends and strangers that give us strength for the journey. And there are prayers that yield our will to a will greater than our own. He paused and then he said, this world he created of moral design, grief and tragedy and hatred are only for a time. Goodness, remembrance, and love have no end. And the Lord of life holds all who die and all who mourn. John Meacham continues in his book to highlight this persistent nature with which we were created and called to exhibit when he shared some words by President Obama after the horrific murders at the Emanuel African Methodist Church in Charleston, South Carolina. President Obama said, God has visited grace upon us for he has allowed us to see where we have been blind. He has given us the chance where we've been lost to find our best selves, to find our best selves. And in the epistle lesson this morning, these wonderful words for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Jesus, in his interactions with that persistent woman in his teachings and with those followers that day, has tried to help us to be faithful, to be faithful and persistent in seeking our better selves. Jesus has encouraged us to never give up, to follow the great commandment and live the lives of faith with persistence that we were created to live. And the message is for all of us with no exceptions no exceptions. Many years ago in Curcio, I learned a wonderful song. I can't sing it for you, but I will tell you part of the verses. It was written by Dallas Holm, part of a work that he entitled His Last Days. And Jesus is singing to us about our faith and calling for us to live it out with all that we have. Jesus sings, all I had to give, I gave. All I had to say, I've said to you. What will you do? The lessons that Jesus has given us remain the same as they were given. It is with persistence, with faithfulness that makes all the difference. God's salvation is available to us always available. God gave us his one and only son so that we would know what it truly means to love God and to love one another with no exceptions. Let us pray. Send us into the work of this week, our Father, to keep the promises we have made to give credit to those who deserve the credit, to patch broken relationships, and to do our work with care, faithfulness, and completeness, and persistence, so that at the end of our day, we will be at home with you and with ourselves. Amen. If you would please join me as we profess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, 
He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me for the prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church around the world in all the forms in which it can be found. Now, more than ever, we need your mercy and loving intercession. We pray that you would make us one, even as your Son prayed on our behalf when he walked among us. Grant that as you give us grace to deny ourselves so that we might truly and only serve you, it would be evident that our unity and purpose come from you, the source of all unity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is our desire that you will be glorified as a result of our work and worship. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for pastors, elders, and ministers of all kinds in your church, that they would be faithful in ministry and that their leadership would be an earthly reflection and example of your leadership. Reveal the truth of your word as we speak it. Reveal the healing power of your sacraments as we offer them. Remind us that we ourselves are a sacrament before you. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that they would acknowledge you and bow before your heavenly authority and power to bring about justice and peace. In all of our human undertakings, remind us constantly to do unto others as if we were doing it unto you for you. Have compassion on all who are suffering from any grief or trouble, as grief and suffering are too much with us all in this life. Bring healing to those who are sick and broken. Bring comfort to those who feel none. Bring friendship and connection to those who are isolated. Turn fear into acceptance and turn anger into love. Today, we pray for Joan, Bill, Linda, Terry, Cola, Sherry, Janet, Jane, Cesar, Jean, Sally, Jeanette, Debbie, Carol, Mary Ellen, all those who are bereaved and all those affected with the COVID-19 virus, for the staff and children at our school and at Sao Paulo Mercy Ministries. We pray especially that you would bring an end to the many deadly diseases that ravage us at this time and grant us relief from COVID-19. Pour into our own hearts the compassion you have for your world. Welcome into your heavenly arms all those who depart this life every day. Reconcile all things to yourself as you sent your Son together and to save. We thank you and praise you for our loved ones who now live in your presence. And we praise your name for all the blessings of this life. We give you thanks especially for the anniversary of James and Susan Huber 
And for the birthdays of Deb Harmon, Liz Muston, Dan White, and Patricia Cova. And we now lift before you what is heavy on our hearts. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Senior Warden here at Holy Trinity. Uh, it's trying times that uh, has brought Father Ted here, but it's certainly wonderful to see you. Uh, the vestry has uh, committed through all this, uh, hopefully as you know, that to communicate as much as we can uh, as we go through this transition process uh, with our rector. So uh, tomorrow evening is our normally scheduled vestry meeting, 6.30. It'll be in the parish hall this time. Uh, we've been, most of our meetings have been via Zoom, but uh, this one will be in person. Uh, it'll be a normal agenda where we go through our financial reports and uh, team reports, school updates. And then uh, at the end of the meeting, uh, Canon Holcomb from uh, the diocese will be here uh, to kind of kick off and introduce us to the search process. Uh, we have, uh, as a vestry, we have been kind of reviewing what that procedure is anyhow and, and hopefully we'll be prepared for tomorrow night. Uh, he will, as I say, he will get us going. That'll start tomorrow night and then following that, I'm sure we will uh, have communications to let you know exactly what comes out of that meeting and uh, where we're going from there. So, um, if you'd like, if you go to the uh, the diocese website, it's at CF for Central Florida, cfdiocese.org. Go to the resources tab down to administration and policies, you will find a document called vacancy and search procedures. It's quite an extensive uh, document and was actually authored by Canon Holcomb, so I'm sure that's what we will be reviewing tomorrow night. And, uh, but it'll give you an idea if you haven't been involved or, or 
seen one of the search processes, give you an idea of what's involved with that and what steps we'll be taking. So uh, that's it. We'll uh, we'll keep communicating. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and the blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For then is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into God's world in peace. Be of good cheer. Hold fast with courage. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.